also up against a very tough playing schedule this afternoon. The Tigers, their fifth match in 14 days, and they go in there without Gary Jack, suspended earlier in the week in the fullback role. Peter Camera, the three quarters of Robinson, Moss, Parrish, Davidson, Conlon, Neal, the forwards, Pierce, Brooks, Siren, and Roach, Elias Maguire, and the coach, Warren Ryan. Canterbury Bankstown still smarting after that 18 0 loss to Manly last week. That was a pretty ordinary performance. They're a better side than that. It's on the lineup today Olchen, Campbell, Nissen in the centre for the injured Andrew Farrah, Curry, Thorne, Lamb, Mortimer, Langmack, Folks, Dunn, Sergeant Thomas and Tucks, and coach, of course, is Bill Gould. The referee for today's clash is Eddie Wood. Canterbury on 14 points are still on top of the Premiership table along with Canberra and Brisbane, while Balmain on 10 points are still keeping in touch with the leaders. And we're underway with what should be a great football game on a beautiful May afternoon. And Mick Neal has first touch of the football. Put down about uh, 18 metres out from his own line. Michael Moss from dummy half. Caught by Thomas. Now Sirenen. Around the ankles, though, was uh, Stephen Folks. Back for Camro. He's got a big kicking game, Camro, but this time straight into the arms of Jason uh, Olchen, who read it pretty well. Just on his own corner line. Mortimer, and he get across to Curry, slipping it to Nissen. Moss was there reading it pretty well, along with Pierce. Now Tunks pushed back and losing the ball. Balmain come up with possession as Roach takes it up towards the quarter line. First mistake of the game. Down the blind side is Maguire. Inside the Canterbury quarter line. So Balmain immediately putting pressure on Canterbury as Brooks is caught. <laughs> Here's Roach, straight ahead, there's the big fellow, and knocking players out of the way with a good bumping run. Takes it to about nine metres from the Canterbury line. It's the last tackle now for Balmain. Line side is Conlon, slipping a short pass to uh, Wayne Pierce, who's lost it. Curry was able to snatch the ball out of his hands. Now Sergeant, standing, will play it. About uh, 20 metres out. Tunks. Yes, well, in order of uh, priority, I think we ought to, uh, at this stage, wish a happy Mother's Day to all those rugby league fans who happen to be mothers. So good luck to you, ladies. And uh, under 21s today. It's been a good day for the Tigers so far. Balmain 28, Canterbury 12, and in reserve grade. Balmain 18, Canterbury 12. And Mortimer with a kick that uh, fails to find touch. Robinson was there to pick it up on the first bounce and getting a pass away to Camro, who's beaten the first attempted tackle. He's up over halfway, but caught by Joe Thomas in a good tackle. Now Brooks getting it away to Parrish. Parrish is held by uh, Peter Tunks. Here's Neil onto Conlon. A short ball again to Pierce, who's had trouble with it. And uh, the referee will play the knock on. So some very strong defence. A couple of handling errors in the early stages of the match. As Mortimer works the scrum. It's screwed right around and comes out to Balmain. Now. Just down the blind side and 32 metres out. And the penalty's gone to the Tigers. Langmack in there. There it was, Paul Langmack just holding the player down. A real blitz by Balmain in the opening minutes. They've come out very strongly. So Conlon with his first chance this afternoon. From about 32 metres out and 10 metres in. Difficult angle. Plenty of thought from Conlon. 32 metres out. A 
low trajectory from Conlon. He didn't really hit that one all that well. Nissen to bring the ball back for the Bulldogs. No score, Balmain and Canterbury. A little bit too over anxious there from Benny Elias, lashing out in the play of the ball. Yes, Benny Elias has got the foot well and truly raised before the ball is put on the ground. So the penalty goes to Canterbury. They find touch about five metres outside their quarter. And Bill Balmain enjoying a fairly strong breeze in this first half. It is a fairly strong breeze. It's coming from the southeast. It's right behind them. It's going to help their kicking game. And Peter Camru, the, the fill-in fullback today, taking Gary Jack's place. He's got a huge boot. He played a bit of football for Balmain first grade last year when I was coaching. He should be able to take full advantage of it today. Interesting to see. Now Langmack gets a one-hander away. They keep it alive. Canterbury tucks. Looking for folks. It was a poor pass. Balmain to come up with it. Michael Neal. Robinson. Trying to dash out of the dummy half, but his opposite Robin Thorne was there to read that. Pierce. Straight into the Canterbury defence. Manages a pass back for Conlon. The players taking these full bore of the hits and still being able to unload the ball. Maguire. Standing out wide. Picks up Parrish. Into the Canterbury quarter line. Been all Balmain in the early moments. Neil, Brooks, Dunn and Tunks wrap him up on the last tackle. Roach, switch back for Ben Elias. Now for Conlon. Looks for Pierce. He finds him now. Sirenin. Well, that pass was intercepted. Well read by Glenn Nissen. Dangerous times for the Bulldogs. There it was coming out wide, and Nissen having to read that and come in. Thomas. Alshon picks up Sergeant, but he won't be needed. The penalty's gone to Canterbury for Balmain being well and truly inside the five. So Canterbury took this afternoon. The forwards really do have to handle the pressure. The poor display last weekend against Manly. The front row having to get well and truly on top. Tucks. Big game required from him as skipper today. In the Balmain Territory for the first time. Mortimer. Langmack. Canterbury attack seems to be standing and just passing. No one really coming onto the ball. Mortimer. Lamb. Switching of play. They pick up Mortimer doubling around. Back for Lamb for the kick. Makes that kicker well and truly away from Camero. Back into his in goal. Lambs down there to follow his own kick as is Thorne and Dunn. And pick up all the necessary work. Likewise, Robinson, Robinson wrapped up by Dunn. Neil. Pierce. Coming from a solid hit from Tunks. He bounced off and then the ball went backwards. Now the knock on from Neil. Well, Pierce on the State Bank replay has had the ball reefed from his grasp three times in the opening seven minutes of the game. It'll be something that he won't be very happy about. I suggest he needs to stand a bit deeper to start with. And more importantly here, a great attacking spot for the Dogs. Lamb. Well, that's a, that is a real poor pass from Terry Lamb. I know he was under pressure. He's going to get out of it rather well. Penalty against the Balmain Tigers inside backs for being offside. But it was a pass under pressure that just shouldn't have come from Terry Lamb. For the specialist kickers, they don't come much easier than this. Eighteen goals so far for Lamb in 88. Make it 19. Canterbury drawing first blood. Over the Tigers, Canterbury 2, Balmain 0. And Mortimer again. Have a little offload to Tunks. And comes in for a, a bit of a serve from Conlon over the top. Langmack. This is down for uh, Peter Camero. Harassed by Robin Thorne and caught right on his own quarter line. 
Neil and Robinson work a run around. Strong Canterbury defence, though, just outside the Balmain quarter. Brooks. Oh, and uh, Peter Tunks will get called out here. And he knew it straight away. Yes, this was a high one with malice of forethought. There it went, and he missed it. Now he's being penalised for missing. Well, Conlon with his place kick for touch. And he's able to find it with a pretty good kick, that one. Yes, with a kick in the wind, that's about uh, 40 metres. And they're about uh, 30 metres out from the Canterbury line. Here's Neil, now Robinson. Thomas is there to put him down. Brooks is the runner. Again, Thomas around the ankles. The sergeant and Tunks over the top. Maguire, change of direction. Here's Neil. Now Roach. Again, Thomas is there to put him down. Gee, he's done some work. This is very uh, high work rate as Thomas. Neil getting a pass on for Pierce. Now Balmain is only about uh, 14 or 15 metres out from the Canterbury line. Here's Neil to Conlon. Running off him with Syrena, but the ball's gone astray. And referee Ward will call it back for the knock on. Some sloppy play again from Balmain. They've had an enormous share of possession. A lot of passes going astray right at the death. There was a good opportunity there for them out wide. Now Canterbury to take the pressure off through Mortimer. Still going, the little halfback. Langmack, folks, broke quickly from the scrum. And again, Eddie Ward is going to get the Balmain players for being offside. He's not making himself too popular in front of the main grandstand. I don't think that'll concern Eddie Ward. He's a, a pretty cool cat as far as uh, crowd reaction is concerned. He's been strong on it early in this match and consistent. Sergeant. Just inside the Balmain half. Mortimer. Langmack. Cuts out Steve Fokes to Dunn. Thomas. Switch of play from Canterbury. A kick from Mortimer. Straight to Camero. Uh, both these sides really. Well, he's really going to try and get some authority out there. Try and get these players to get off in the play of the ball. So, Peter Camero to kick for touch on this occasion. Ross Conlon's hobbling about a bit in back play. Bit of an ankle or a knee problem for Conlon. There's Robinson on the run around off Elias. Now for Maguire. And now the penalty comes for Balmain. So very much involved in the last few minutes of the match, the referee, Eddie Ward. And this will give an opportunity for Conlon if he's had time to recover with that knee problem. If we can just pick up uh, behind uh, the kicker, Conlon, Russell Gartner, the uh, very experienced veteran winger, is on there as a, uh, a runner for the Balmain side. This one from directly in front. About 35 metres out. He likes that one. So Balmain come back with the answer to level the score lines. 2 all Balmain and Canterbury. We start from Lamb midway through the first half. Down for Paul Sirenin. Alan truly wrapped up there by Tony Curry. Davidson. Bruce Maguire played strongly on Wednesday night, as did all the Balmain forwards. Emru. Downfield for Alton. That's a huge kick and a great bounce for the Tigers fullback. A superb bounce for Peter Camero. It was a towering punt, though. Well, the State Bank replay will show that one very clearly. That was a beautiful kick from just inside his quarter. And it's gone into touch only about five metres outside the Canterbury Bankstown goal line. A beautiful kick with the breeze, of course, but uh, nonetheless, he's taking full advantage of it. Mortimer. If 
followed just about everywhere this afternoon by Wayne Pearce. Nissen. There's the scrums and penalties. 3-2 the scrums to Canterbury. By four the penalties their way too. Nine penalties already and just midway through this first half as Canterbury now start to take the pressure off through Alshon. Great run from the fullback. Takes it 32 metres out. Penalty's gone to Canterbury. Now Langmack came charging through in support and got bowled over by Surinam. And the penalty has been given to Canterbury because of that. I don't think there's anything malicious in it. They just uh, got in the way. So from the uh, penalty, Canterbury will uh, take it just about uh, eight metres or so, or close enough to ten metres inside the Balmain half. Mortimer back to Thomas, and now on to Langmack, and a short ball for Robin Thorne. He's harassed by Neil, got around Neil, in fact, but is now held by Parrish, just outside, and very nearly lost the ball, but uh, was able to hang on to it. Now here come the Bulldogs as Folks takes it up to the quarter line. Caught by Elias. Alchin is a dummy half, now here's Langmack. A dummy from Langmack, now it got away, here's Alchin with it. Alchin still running strongly, only 10 metres out. Canterbury putting plenty of pressure now on Balmain. Mortimer to Lamb. A little kick ahead. It's been uh, stopped though by Balmain. They got a foot to it and dived on the ball. And the referee's called a knock on. Well, off Wayne Pierce. He could nearly have been penalised. Terry Lamb for holding Pierce back too. State Bank replay. There he is. That's the uh, holding back of Pierce that I thought the crowd were reacting to. And I think quite rightly a penalty should have gone to Balmain there. Well, anyway, from the scrum, the dogs still have it and still able to put some pressure on, but Lamb. Hasn't been able to control it properly. Now it's with Mortimer. Here's Langmack. Spinning in the tackle. Slipping it to Alchon. Alchon 10 metres out from the Balmain line. Playing the ball very quickly, this Canterbury side. Trying to wear out Balmain. They've had a very heavy program. They've got no back line. Thomas is caught 10 metres out. He had no one to pass it to. Langmack has it again. Around the corner, beautiful pass for Terry Lamb. And Lamb scores a great try of a magnificent Langmack pass. That's the sort of thing that every forward is seeking to do. That is the absolute epitome of rugby league. Watch it again as Langmack gets it, swings the ball around the body of the player and underneath so that there's no chance of the ball being knocked down. Lamb goes in and scores a very good try. See it again from another angle. You'll see Langmack go through the gap there at one arm free, swings it to Lamb, and Lamb's in without a hand being laid on him. It really is a, a beautiful bit of uh, this ball distribution at its absolute best. Again, Langmack underneath the body and around the front, and there's the pass that uh, has got them four points. Terry Lamb with the conversion attempt of his own try. He's about five metres outside the left hand upright. <laughs> Hits the upright this time, no conversion, but the Bulldogs have their nose in front. It's six points to two. Mortimer into the dummy half position. Straight up the middle, dummies his way past Sirin, and there was a big hole there. Folks was there to back him up. A few gaps appearing in this Balmain defence. Langmack. Great ball away again from Langmack. Tunks, Curry, Campbell. Pierce is the one to take him on. Comes inside Pierce, still trying to keep it alive. Wrestled to the ground by Moss and Conlon. Last tackle for Canterbury. Mortimer. Kick straight across field to the wing of Robinson. He's got an opportunity here if he can get round Thorne when he come back inside and wrapped up by Nissen. Playing against his uh, former junior club, young Robinson, but this is Parrish standing and attracting the defenders. 10 metres from halfway now. Balmain with McNeil. Looking up with Parrish. Parrish is about five metres from halfway. Back for Camero. His kick straight down to uh, Jason Alchin. And Alchin takes it uh, 32 metres out from his own line. Andrew Farrah not playing in the centre today. But he is sidelined with Bill Anderson. Andrew, you've had to pull out of today's game with that ankle injury. Will you be right for Wednesday night's Panasonic City Country Challenge? Uh, yes, at this stage, I, um, you know, I think I'll be all right. Yeah. Well, Balmain have had a fairly heavy program, and you look like you're trying to capitalise it here, uh, Canterbury, by moving the ball around on them. 
Yeah, that's true. They've been, uh, you know, both sides have been throwing the ball around. Uh, hopefully, uh, there might, have been, might be a bit of a flat spot in Balmain's, in Balmain's game, and uh, hopefully we can capitalise on it. Well, let's see if that happens. Yeah. Tough. Andrew Farrar, there is a medical, of course, tomorrow morning for all those representative players. And this is one of them. Bruce Maguire, who's been outstanding for him in the last month or so. Here's Sirenen, up to halfway and almost through. But pulled down five metres inside Canterbury's half. Elias from dummy half links up with Neil. Now to Conlon. Conlon caught by Langmack. Curry into assist. Six points to two. It's Canterbury over Balmain as Roach turns it back inside to Neil. Wrapped up well by Tunks. Blindside is Brooks. The little kick ahead will find touch. Yes, a very skillful kick there by Brooks. The grubber along the ground. You can see it rolling end over end over end. Takes play to within about uh, 15 metres now, maybe 10 metres of the Canterbury line. Good kick. The scrum is down about 10 metres out from the Canterbury line. Worked by Mortimer for the Bulldogs. Gone with the feed, no problem there. Mortimer caught at the scrum base. Campbell caught in a great tackle from Neil. Now Lamb. Good defence from Wayne Pierce that time. Now Lamb looking for a penalty and gets it. Yes, Conlon got a bit dramatic there, and uh, I think Lamb probably milked that one to the nth degree too. Perhaps that was an occasion when the referee was conned a little bit. Well, several players improving on their theatrical technique. <laughs> Now, Peter Tunks is about 35 metres out from the Canterbury line. Thomas. Mortimer. 10 metres from halfway. Dunn charging through, almost over the slipper to Langnack. Couldn't do so, though. Now, here's Lamb, now Mortimer. A little kick ahead for Thorne, but the kick will roll into touch. About uh, 30 metres out from the Balmain line. Well, as Graham has mentioned, this has been a pretty tough schedule for the Balmain side. Five games in two weeks. And I guess that uh, the pressure and the speed that Canterbury are playing the game won't help their cause, Bill. No, it will not. Canterbury are trying to play the ball very quickly, and they're going to find out if, uh, if Balmain will tire or not. They've also been using a big kicking game, and that's one way of turning a team around. Let's have a look at John Davidson here making a break. That was against the run of play because Canterbury was giving the impression that they were starting to get on top through the forwards, but this next five or six minutes before half-time could very well tell the story. OK, Neil has it. Now Conlon. Running off him is Maguire. Back to Conlon. Running around Parrish, been getting a pass that was magnificently picked up by Robinson, but the pass has been real forward. Yes, this pass after a lot of weaving and ducking by Conlon is about a foot and a half forward, and uh, Robinson did marvellously well to pick that up. Absolutely great. Lamb has it. Now Curry. Can't get around Parrish, though. Right on the halfway mark now, the Bulldogs. Alchin links up with Lamb. The kick ahead that come off the Balmain player. And that's the restart of the tackle count. Wasn't deliberately played at. Incredible number of kicks that Canterbury are putting in through Lamb and Mortimer. Then, and then basically not kicks for touch. They're just trying to angle in behind the wingers. Balmain employing a, a, a full straight line of defence. Michael Neal up in that front line. They're trying to catch them out with no cover defence. Folks playing at 10 metres inside the Balmain half. Lamb. Caught by Sirenin, but able to offload to Thomas. Back to Alchin, standing still now. Canterbury and Alchin isn't. Alchin's moving very quickly. He's got folks with him. Over the quarter line, folks. This time he's caught by Camro. Last tackle now for the Bulldogs. They go left. They've got men over there to burn, but they're going straight. Now uh, it was a flick pass back to Langmack and a wild pass for Lamb on to Robin Thorne. But Thorne is caught, and that'll be a turnover. But a near thing for Balmain. Incredible situation from Balmain. They really are doing it tough in this first half, and they're going to turn around in the second with a possible scoreline against them and Canterbury with the breeze at their backs. Robinson's trying to do his best to get them out of trouble. 
Neil, Pierce. It's got to be a tired forward pack for the Tigers. They've just got to hang in there and hope that they get their second win. Roach now takes on the defence. The crowd again letting Eddie Ward know what they think about his interpretation of the five. Back for Camro. And another big kick, but straight to Alshon. Well, he's misread it. It's gone over his head, and the bounce again. Absolutely incredible. They did it well to soak up all that pressure, Balmain, and now get Canterbury down in their own territory. Langmack screaming for Robin Thorne to come in off the wing. He does just that. Driven back by David Brooks. 6 2, the Bulldogs lead. Sergeant. Very slowly to his feet out of all this mess. Bit of an injury problem for Sergeant. Switch of play from Mortimer. Still down, Sergeant. Done. Good ball away to Langmack. He gets the ball away again, round the back. Touched in flight by Balmain. They'll get six more, Canterbury. Tunks, they've got plenty of numbers over here. Back in field for Curry. He straightens up again. Can't keep it alive for Campbell. Canterbury really starting to stretch the Tigers. Alshon. He really has planted himself up in the front line when attacking Canterbury. Thomas. Into the quarter line. Elgin spending as much time in the dummy half around that area as he is at fullback. Back for Chunks. Looking for Mortimer and Langmack. He gave it to Langmack. The penalty will go against him being tackled before the pass came. And it will give Canterbury a chance through Lamb for a shot at goal. Yes, the penalty there as Tunks gets the pass away to Langmack. He's well and truly held there by, I think, Maguire and unable to uh, get a pass away. So the referee was on the mark there. Canterbury in the last 10 minutes had really started to uh, spread this Balmain side. A few holes started to develop in the Balmain defence. Impressed with the way Alchin comes up into the line. He's coming there fairly regularly. We saw Shuck Sargent back to his feet and now the Balmain players. Really bending over, starting to go deep for some breath. Been all Canterbury since the first ten minutes of the first half. One from two. For Terry Lamb. Be a very, very handy lead if he can get this kick. They'll turn around, as I said before, with the breeze at their backs in the second half. Just inside the quarter line, midway between the goalposts and touch. Well, again, he's failed. The Pierce has uh, made a meal of it in the end goal. So there'll still be plenty more pressure to come from Canterbury in the last few minutes here before the halftime break. With the line dropout from Conlon. And taking his time. Yes, he's in no hurry to get the ball back into play, is he? Well, I think he knows exactly how much pressure his forwards have been under. He really does require a big chase. Well, he's kicked more to the open field, away from his forwards. And Lamb didn't have to take on too many defenders, really. So it wasn't the kick directed for his forward pack done now. Just short of the quarter again, Canterbury. Searching for their second try, Mortimer. Folks. Peter Dunn, uh, Peter Tanks, I should say. Back for Mortimer. Up the middle, the little kick and chase from Mortimer. Well taken from Camro, and he was well taken from Mortimer. A couple of minutes away from half time, Davidson. Good big effort from Balmain to hang on here. Parrish, the backs coming into play. Back for Davidson. And managed to take play outside the 22. Maguire. And the last tackle. And again, it's back for Camro. No one can complain about his contribution in the first half. Robin Thorne. 
when they left in Canterbury just before the break. Campbell. He's searching for quick play. The ball's Mortimer. Up the middle with Thomas and Lamb. Missing was the player that went without it. Thomas picks up Steve Folks. Tanks. Well, that was a line ball that passed to Tanks. Mortimer. Very, very flat, Canterbury. Somebody's got to get them started. Langmac. Taken solidly. Lamb with a midfield bomb for Camro. Plenty of pressure coming down on him. He takes it well. He's done a fine job for the Balmain side in uh, this role of fullback. Stood his ground magnificently there and uh, copped these slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. But he's done a marvellous job. So Pierce on the quarter line. Time almost up in this first half. Moss. There's the siren. So at half time, a good lead for Canterbury into the breeze. They lead Balmain six points to two. We welcome you back to Leichhardt Oval for the second half of what has been a very exciting game of football. And the shadows are already lengthening across the field. And there's a little bit of a nip in the air. First sign of winter. And Bill Anderson has been uh, snooping around the dressing rooms. Bill, what do you have to report? Well, there are no changes to either side. Phil Gould, the Canterbury coach, was fairly happy. He knows he's leading 6-2 to two and got the advantage of this strong breeze. And his instructions are for Canterbury to use it. There won't be any of those short kicks. It'll be long kicks to turn Balmain around. Warren Ryan could ask for nothing more from his side except to try and maintain possession as long as possible, minimise his mistakes and a great commitment from his forwards. There's Phil Gould watching uh, intently and Ken Wilson, a very useful player, uh, who's the reserve grade coach. Now, the Bulldogs in possession in their own quarter. And we'll check the first half tackles. Balmain have made 113 of them with Brooks and Elias showing the way. Canterbury's 88, Dunn and Tunks sharing the, uh, the lead in the tackle count there. Now, Lamb with his clearing kick. Sends Camero back to the quarter line. This one is there to pull him down. Balmain is slow to come back on side too. As Robinson plays it. Parrish. Got within uh, six or seven metres from halfway. Roach. Put around the ankles. Here comes Cyrano. He's taken at 10 metres inside uh, Canterbury Territory. It's the last tackle signal for Balmain. Neil, Conlon, and Camro. A nice pass back from Maguire and then on to Moss. Moss turning it back inside to Neil. Here come the Tigers. Neil's got support on the wing from Davidson, who's in the score. Well, that's a great fight back from Balmain. Yes, a splendid try, early days in the second half. The first couple of minutes, Elias gets the pass away to Neil. Neil goes wide to Conlon. Conlon back on the inside there. We're just watching the play now. As out they come, it's Moss going strongly up the sideline. Gets it back into Neil, who's figured in the move twice now. He's got the fullback dead here. And just gives the pass out to Davidson. And Davidson goes in and scores a very good and well-worked-out try by the uh, Tigers. Neil... It was all precision passing. There was nobody hung on just too long. The passes were taken and given with alacrity, and that's exactly what was required. Moss gave it at exactly the right moment. Back on the inside, it was slightly low, but Neil could handle that. He's only a little fellow himself, and the pass away to Davidson was first class. So that's a good try to Balmain, and they're back on level terms again. Well, the butcher really carved him up there, didn't he? John Davidson in the corner. Conlon. Swinging around, and it looks a beautiful kick. Magnificent goal for Ross Conlon. Oh, boy, that was a great kick. And the Tigers hit the front. Eight points to six. He's got Campbell with him. But, uh, looks to take the tackle. Three of them in there to put him down. Davidson came over the top with a pretty vicious serve on him as well. And Michael Moss, who was also involved in the tackle, has uh, been injured in it. They've immediately called for some help for him as Canterbury via Lamb. Bring it back towards the halfway mark. Here's Folks. 
our main trainers and uh, medical staff with Michael Moss now as Tunks got it back to Langmac. Bit of a gap there for Langmac. Turned it back for Olchen. Ten metres inside Balmain's half. Last tackle, and away it goes to Nissen. Nissen's got support from uh, Tunks. Tunks dropped it behind him. Lamb kicked it ahead. Balmain come up with it. And uh, there's Scott Gale getting on, and uh, Bill, that's a head bin job. Yes, yeah, so it'll, it'll be going into the head bin, young Moss. Scott Gale in 16, uh, moving on now. Last tackle for Balmain. Elias. Puts up the bomb yet again for Alsham. Takes it well. Tremendous amount of pressure. Beautiful take from the fullback. Alchin stood his ground. State Bank replay absolutely magnificently. It was a courage take. Lamb, Canterbury trying to spread the ball. Dangerously close to their line. Thomas. Well, that's silly play. Gale. He should score, Scotty Gale. Remarkable play from Canterbury to try and shift that ball. And Gale always the opportunist. Great try, timely for the Tigers. State Bank replay will show Gale coming up with the ball that was dropped by Thomas. Thomas did what I consider to be the unpardonable thing, a one-handed pass, trying to get it away. Gale copped it straight away and set his sights for a try. Very nearly got stopped at a full extent, dived and scored. Just getting the ball down over the line. Watch Thomas again. He's about to unload and then it gets knocked out of his hands and Gale straight to that real speedster. And here he goes and just there, full stretch. First class, Lamb gets a, a dangerous pass away to Thomas. One-handed, Thomas infected with the bug of having to release the ball only seven or eight yards from his line. Gale can't believe his good fortune. He gets it and motors the 15 metres that's required to score a good try. And that could well and truly be the try of the match. Conlon again now. Well, a coat of paint has destroyed the extra two points for Balmain. 12-6, the Tigers over Canterbury. David Gillespie approaching the sideline and uh, we'll watch with interest to see who he's going to replace. Now, Camro sends this straight down Jason Alchin's throat. That'll be the only weakness, uh, if it's a weakness in his game today, that he's not been able to direct his long kicks away from the fullback. Uh, but he's got the ball away beautifully off his foot many times, but uh, uh, frankly it's gone to the, uh, the other fullback. And the little kick from Waterman, he just couldn't get there in time. Neil is there to cover. We understand that uh, Sargent will be the Canterbury player replaced by Gillespie. As soon as it's opportune. Now Maguire, Maguire almost through. But this is a revitalised Balmain side. Now here's Roach. Getting it on to Pierce. And Jim, very easy yardage at the moment, aren't they? Certainly are. Elias, a field goal attempt. And it's there. That's the cushion they were looking for. Well, that's a bit of thoughtful play by Benny Elias to get the ball there and drop a field goal. It was uh, really required a bit of thought, and uh, they worked themselves into a good position. And uh, that puts them just that... Uh, point away now from a try to goal bringing them back to level terms 13 points to six folks puts it in the air Davidson's underneath it takes it without too many worries at all Campbell gets to him and holds him about uh, 15 meters out from the Balmain line so they just haven't been able to come up with anything Canterbury they, they're guilty of really trying to just do too many things too quickly a lot of players coming in there, one off the ruck and trying to dominate the the key role in the Canterbury attack. It really hasn't been left to any one man. Their backs very seldom set. Now Gale. Slowly to his feet, Roach. Probably got the points decision at this stage over the Canterbury forwards, Steve Roach. Well, the penalty's going to go against him here for something maybe he has said. Could prove an extremely costly penalty. Wayne Pierce is having plenty to say to him as we watch the State Bank replay. Eddie Ward's uh, 
Wayne Pearce has told Stephen Roach just to shut up and say nothing, just to cop it. Now, this is what the penalty's all about. I don't know. It must have been something he said to the referee. But uh, there's your, the answer. He's got blood all over his face, so we'll assume that he's copped an elbow or something in the tackle. He's still something to say. He's still got plenty to say. Vital for Canterbury. Struck it well, but he's uh, pushed it to the left. So the scoreline will remain Balmain 13, Canterbury 6. Good crowd in the sun at the Leichhardt Hill. Now Tunks getting it back to Thomas. Mortimer. Langmack. Back inside for Folks. He's flicked it back for Mortimer. Back to Langmack. Good stuff from Canterbury. Langmack over the quarter line. A pass again. Well, Canterbury come up with a penalty. Well, yes. David Gillespie's the man that went without the ball. You'll see that he was tackled well and truly before the pass ever came. Yes, the State Bank replay shows it. At this point here, he's tackled before the ball ever came to him, so the referee had no option. This is a pretty important penalty with about uh, nine minutes to go. Directly in front, the Lionel kicked the goal, the one would think. And then they're only uh, they're within fighting distance. Having a change, Bill? Yes, Paul Sirenen coming from the field. Kevin Hardwick in 23 takes his place, and he's a tackling machine. So a shot for uh, Terry Lamb. From right in front. Makes no mistake with this one. So we've still got a football game in our hands here. It's Balmain 13, Canterbury 8. Well, as Conlon restarts, a converted try can win the game for uh, Canterbury. And Langmack brings it up towards his own quarter line. Hardwick's in there to make the tackle. And there's a ton of time left in this football match to score two or three tries. What Canterbury have got to do is really don't waste their, their tackles. See, they should be kicking on early tackles to turn Balmain around. And again, a silly mistake comes with this Balmain possession, and Elias is ducked number one. Finally takes the tackle just inside the Canterbury quarter. And here's a Gale. Another field goal is still important for Balmain if they just head this ball towards the post. Brooks. Working play towards the centre of the field. Elias is back ready for it. Now it's gone the other way. Neil. Roach. A long cutout pass for Davidson. Davidson will score. Yes! State back replay will show a perfect pass from uh, big Steve Roach here to put his wing three quarter Davidson beyond the defence. There it is. You can see the width of the defence there. Campbell's yards in field. And Davidson goes up, up, up and away and scores the try. It's sensational stuff. It's very exciting. Neil from the top camera. The ball away to Roach and that long cutout pass. And Sandy Campbell's been sucked into midfield. But there he goes over the back of Alchon and scores the try. Again, Neil Roach, watch the length of the pass. Suddenly Campbell realises, Jesus, I, I'll never make it. And he turned his back and tried to sprint to him, but Davidson was too quick. A spectacular try. <laughs> yes, it doesn't really matter which way your head's facing. <laughs> as long as you get the ball down. Two tries to Johnny Davidson. Yes, and... Well, there's been another change down there, Bill. Paul Clark, number 26, on for Steve Roach. Uh, had a great game, Roach, didn't he? Sure did. There he is. And there is the man who's on to replace him. Now, I don't think the Ross Conlon will be thanking Davidson too much for the position of the tries that he scored. He scored two of them from just about identical positions. He kicked a magnificent conversion a little while ago, just after half-time. Can he repeat that effort? Well, no chance with that one. He's pushed it out to the right. But it's just about the ball game. Balmain 17, Canterbury 8. The fat lady's about to sing. Extremely disappointing performance from Canterbury in the second half. Outstanding the Balmain forwards. As Lamb gets play underway, Elias got a hand to it and knocked it back. 
great performance, as we said, one from Steve Roach. He's got the points decision over the Bulldog six. Peter Tux will have to do his best to try and turn that around in the representative matches, but Phil Gould must be wondering what went wrong after half time. Hardwick. Maybe a lack of instructions followed out. They were attacked. They really haven't set themselves a backline, Canterbury. Campbell, nowhere to go. Back in field. Manages to unload for Mortimer. Got to keep it alive now. Inside the last five. Folks was trying to hand it off out the back. But Balmain, full of running now. Langmack. Alchin. Well, Good Jack tackle. Langmack's had a fine game for Canterbury-Bankstown. His ball distribution's been excellent. Yes, Langmack has been by far their best player. Still involved, still looking to try and set them alight. He flicks it out the back for Lamb. The pass was there to be taken. He was into a hole. Here it comes. These are the sorts of things he does, but Lamb was not ready for that one. He was backing up. Uh, if he's going to do that, he needs to be aware all the time. Mortimer for Lamb. Pushed it out for Curry. Back for Mortimer, backing up. Back on the inside for Langmack. Showing the ball. Now for Thomas. Langmack. Tanks. Out for Alshin. Done. Keeping it alive. Time well and truly against Canterbury. Tanks. Thomas. Back for Langmack. Well, one of the few occasions where they came up trumps. Wayne Pierce is on the charge. Chasing him is Steve Folks. Folks will get to him. Back for Elias. And Gillespie rats up Elias. Can it be another Balmain try? This crowd has given them tremendous support. Benny Elias looking on the blind side through Brooks. Now Scott Gale. Back for Robinson. And Eddie Ward says the ball was knocked forward as Michael Neal picked it up. So they've been far too good, Balmain. Yes, the State Bank replay shows the demise of that uh, try. The last pass that Neal dived so courageously for and got on the full had gone forward. So the, uh, the fat lady might be just about to seek. <laughs> Can't have to come up with it. Sensational circumstances towards the end of last year when Warren Ryan left the Canterbury Club. So plenty of satisfaction for him in the win this afternoon against the team that he took to two cup victories as a penalty comes against Langmack for shepherding. Yes, Langmack uh, just getting too involved. There was uh, Peter Tunks was the man that uh, shepherded, uh, was the shepherd. The referee having no alternative but to penalise him even though it's in a very simple position i really feel for langmack he doesn't deserve to be in a losing side today he's played absolutely superbly and was uh, well in line for man of the match until the uh, the score got away from uh, the canterbury bankstown side two from five for conlon his goal kicking hasn't been needed three tries to one advantage for balmain at half-time, you would have thought they were going to tie up. They must pay credit to their conditioners, their trainers. There's the extra two points from Conlon. The Balmain racing away, 19, Canterbury 8. Inside the last minute, the Balmain supporters know they've got a victory and a great one. Make no mistake about it against plenty of odds. The penalties have gone against them. Hardwick. Yes, those penalties were 12 to 5 in Canterbury's favour, so they couldn't have asked for a better advantage. There's the siren. Great reception from the crowd. They deserve it. They're a tired bunch of players. They've cheered their heroes on this afternoon to a magnificent victory. 
who've backed up their fifth game in 14 days and a great performance, 19 to 8 over the Bulldogs.